guys, it is Quaman here today, and I'm bringing you another Dragon Ball Z segment discussing the new Dragon Ball Super Episode 1 review. And in this video, I'm going to be discussing several things ranging from the plot, interesting details I observed. I'm going to talk about the action, even though there wasn't that much about the action, along with impressions and my overall thoughts on it. But before we get into that, I just wanted to tell you guys that I was actually on vacation for about a week. That's why I haven't uploaded in a little while. And I'm going to start doing these reviews from now on by actually talking to the camera because for several reasons, I kind of took a page out of Black and Fist's book. Number one, it reduces the amount of copyright problems that we already have to deal with. And number two, it helps me get the video out faster because I actually already edited this video in its first style and it took me 14 hours to put you know all the screenshots and all you know the little clips to illustrate what I was saying and I'm like I can't use this strategy when I only have literally like a couple hours to edit these videos so without wasting any more time let's get straight into the first review for Dragon Ball Super so let's begin by talking about the first thing which deals with the plot now obviously there isn't that much of a plot for the very first episode if you really analyze Dragon Ball Super in its entirety. The real main plot of this story, and you know, in in the story you always have to have a problem. The problem for this main story was essentially associated with Goten and Trunks trying to find a present of some sort for Videl, and essentially that's what they were primarily doing throughout the episode. We also see that Goku is very frustrated, as shown in the manga, with being a radish farmer, and <laughs> essentially because of the fact that Mr. Satan comes at the end of the episode to actually give Goku, you know, the 100 million zenny to actually stop being a radish farmer actually took care of that problem too. And now we could see the plot advance a lot more. But I think the main thing that this episode is trying to do is try to show a little bit, you know, of all the other characters. Piccolo had like literally like five seconds of time. Gohan, Videl, Trunks, Goten is trying to bring a lot of these characters back so we can kind of see, you know, the different types of things that they would be doing moving on in the series. And I think that that's really, really interesting how they were able to do a little bit of everything in one episode without really having a serious plot. But it was obviously a very lighthearted tone. There's nothing major. It didn't start off like Dragon Ball Z did, where we literally see like Raditz come and he's already causing trouble by the first episode. And, you know, Dragon Ball was a little bit different because in Dragon Ball, we actually don't really see a major plot taking place. Goku essentially just meets Bulma and moves around. And in GT, there actually was a problem with Goku becoming a kid. So, you know, you can either start off the lighthearted route or you could start off, you know, the obviously the more serious tone where it's like the Saiyan Saga, Namek Saga, also going to the Android Saga, and to some degree the Boo Saga in terms of the serious tone Dragon Ball. But I think that the plot was pretty interesting. There isn't much to say about it as a whole. But I really, really enjoy looking forward to this moving on. So, let's talk about the action sequences of Dragon Ball Super. Now, there really wasn't much to say as a whole, because this episode really didn't have that much action. There were only two action sequences. The first one, we see Goten getting into a little accident when he's on the trailer, and Goku uses his instant transmission to help Goten out by picking up the trailer and, like, basically helping Goten, even though Goten was never in any serious danger to begin with. And it, was, it wasn't that much of a serious action scene, but it was kind of nice to see Goku flying fast and, you know, to see Goku actually using his instant transmission and flying around. It was cool, you know, it was a fun scene, but it wasn't a serious action sequence. But the, I guess you would say the bigger action sequence in this episode would have been when we saw Goten and Trunks actually fighting that ridiculously large rattlesnake that is so big that he puts Ekans and Arbok to shame in terms of the size. And we saw, like, Goten and Trunks, you know, kind of playing hot potato with the actual spring water that they were saving for Videl, and I really, really liked that scene. I mean, it wasn't much of an action sequence, and the snake itself wasn't that threatening of a villain, and we all know as Dragon Ball fans that Goten and Trunks are ridiculously powerful kids that can wipe out that snail snake in two seconds, but, I mean, it was kind of fun. What I really liked, though, is in that one scene where Trunks is, like, really punching, you know, the snake really, really, really fast, and the snake is, like, going all the way back to the tree. That was a really, really cool scene. I really, really enjoyed that scene. I I think it was well animated. I think it was the best animated aspect of this episode as a whole. So when I really look at the action in this episode, there really wasn't much to say, but it was fun to watch, you know, their little fight with the snake. And, you know, I look forward to looking at a lot more action sequences of Dragon Ball Super moving forward, especially in terms of how they choose to animate it. But I felt the action was pretty fair for a lighthearted episode. 
So, let's talk about some of the interesting details that I've observed about this episode. Well, the very first thing I observed is that little training sequence and Goku was kind of training by himself when Goten was on the track. It was very different in the actual manga aspect because in the manga, we actually see Goku actually fighting against Majin Buu. He was fighting Cell and he was fighting Frieza. And I actually thought that was really, really cool to kind of show like like something that's going on in his mind where he's like fighting these villains. I thought that would have been a lot better for the actual animated series. But they took that out. I don't know why. Maybe, you know, it, they felt it was unnecessary. But I felt that that little quick scene in the manga was actually really interesting too. And when we move on to the Beerus scene. Now, the Beerus scene was a lot different. Number one, the aliens look completely different in the manga as opposed to what they look like in the actual animated series. And when you compare that to the scene where Beerus is actually talking with them, that was different too. Because in the manga, the aliens actually tried to poison Beerus and that ticked Beerus off and then he just blew up their planet. What we saw in this episode is that Beerus felt that their food was greasy and then he actually blew up half of their planet. So all of that was a very, very, very different too. And also in the manga, Beerus also mentions Yasai Soup, which is actually like a pun on the actual name for Saiyan, which is what reminded him of the Super Saiyan God, you know, which was mentioned actually in the manga, but not mentioned in the anime. And I felt that that was kind of bad that they took that out because the whole vegetable soup thing was supposed to kind of add a little bit of flavor. But as I was talking about with Geekdom, the whole Yasai thing only kind of makes sense in Japanese as opposed to English because in English you really can't make a Japanese name pun make sense with the word because vegetable just wouldn't fit with it well when you think about it for English but it works well, a lot better in Japanese but you know as far as other interesting details I also noticed that when we're looking at the money when we're looking at the scene where Goku's giving Chi Chi the 100 million zenny that he got from Hercule we actually see a little glimpse of Toriyama's icon that he uses for all the manga volumes, all the Shonen Jump issues. We actually see Toriyama's actual icon in that part of the actual money. And I found that that was really cool how we actually see like his actual icon. It's kind of like a little Easter egg for all of the fans of the series. So that's another interesting fact. And one final thing I observed that was a little bit different is that it seems that Goten is significantly shorter than Trunks in Dragon Ball Super as opposed to the actual Dragon Ball Z series where they look a lot closer in height. I, I noticed that and I felt it wasn't that big of a deal, but I just noticed that Trunks looks significantly taller than Goten in Dragon Ball Super as opposed to what he looked like in even Battle of Gods too. So I also felt that, that was, those are some interesting facts that you guys might want to, you know, point out. And if you guys observed any other interesting facts, you know, that I didn't mention, please say so in the comment section below. But let's move on to the impressions. So, let's discuss some of the impressions of this episode as a whole. Now, I wanted to start off by saying that this episode gave off the feeling of a very light-hearted and comical tone as a whole in this episode. Now, what I really want to talk about, number one, was some of the comical moments. Now, we got a sense of adventure in this episode where we see Goten and Trunks, you know, going to actually find, like, the spring water for Videl, but a lot of that was really coincided with a lot of the actual comical moments. For example, when we see, like, the couple that's, like, freaking out that they're seeing, like, two flying kids, I thought that was pretty funny. Then when we see the old man complaining about the ridiculously high prices, that was really, really really well put together in conjunction with Goten and Trunks, you know, trying to find, you know, Videla present. And then also what we see later on in the episode where Master Roshi is like finding, oh, I can get some special DVDs now. In the translated version, I saw he said special DVDs when Goku had the 100 million zenny. We all know what he means by special DVDs. It was a little funny joke. And I also like when we saw like the whole scene with Majin Buu. Now, here's what's funny about Majin Buu, guys. I don't know if it's just me. But I felt that when Majin Buu was really pissed off about not being fed, I thought it was so funny how like nobody really raised an eyebrow at his appearance. Like guys, it's not normal when you see a big, fat, overweight, pink creature with diapers and closed eyes. You know, just walking around with literally like a tail on his head. That's not normal for a regular person to see. If I saw a creature like Majin Buu in real life, I would have freaked out. But Honestly, you know, I, I guess, you know, they were just like, what the heck's going on here? But I found that scene, you know, pretty interesting too. And, you know, a lot of this episode was really, really funny. You know, also when we saw Chi Chi when she was reacting to Master Roshi when he actually wanted all the money. I found that was pretty funny too and how Goku looked, looked so bored. It was so funny looking at how bored 
Goku was at the beginning of the episode when he was literally, you know, on that track the trailer. You could tell he did not want to do this. And, you know, a lot of this episode was really fun, too. I think it gave off a great impression. And in terms of an additional impression, in terms of the actual animation as a whole, I felt that the animation was great in this episode. Obviously, it's not as good as Battle of Gods or Fukatsu no Weft because obviously in both of those, they obviously have a lot more money to do more animation. But I felt that, you know, the animation did a very, very solid job. Some of you might be a fan of the original Dragon Ball Z series. I personally have a place in my heart for the original Dragon Ball Z series. But, I mean, I really like this animation. They put a lot more emphasis on character body types. And in the comment section below, I want you guys to put hashtag Dragon Ball, hashtag Dragon Ball Z, hashtag Dragon Ball GT, hashtag Dragon Ball Super, or anything else you'd like to say to indicate what's your favorite type of Dragon Ball animation in terms of style, because all the Dragon Ball animations have style. I might do a video in the future about that if there's enough to say. And, you know, I felt that, you know, the animation was good, and my overall impressions are generally positive for this episode. It's lighthearted, so it might not be as entertaining and serious as the other episodes, but as a whole, this episode gave me a, gave me a pretty good impression. So, guys, that has been my video for today. Day. Overall, I thought this episode was awesome, and I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5 stars. I take off 1 star simply because of the fact that Piccolo was only in it for 10 seconds. I'm just kidding, guys. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I can see the trolls already. I'm kidding, guys. I'm going to give it a 5 stars because of what it was aiming to do, because you can't expect that much out of a premiere. It wasn't serious. It was very lighthearted. But, I mean, lighthearted Dragon Ball will always have a place in my heart. Obviously, some people might be turned off from the lighthearted aspect of Dragon Ball Z. But, as a whole, I really, really enjoyed this episode. And I look forward to episode 2, where it looks like we're going to be seeing, you know, Vegeta and Bulma's family going on some sort of trip. And I also wanted to say that I'm going to be doing an episode predictions for every episode of Dragon Ball Super so I can go a lot more in-depth about what I think is going to happen. I'm actually basing this off of my favorite YouTuber who's Trust Chan 2. He does the same thing where he does like an episode review and then after that he actually does like an actual predictions for the upcoming episode of The Walking Dead. So I really admire Trust Chan's channel and you know he's inspired me to do a lot of the things I've done on YouTube here. And I'm going to kind of model this after him. So if you guys, you know, want to share that I, you know, I admire him, you feel free to do so. I really don't mind. But that concludes this video for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to try to do these videos a lot faster next time. And I'm back from vacation, so expect a whole lot more videos from you guys. And I hope you guys enjoyed. So most importantly, over everything else, please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. And remember, as I always say, to have a great day, guys. And I hope you guys enjoy the blooper the much more serious arcs that are going to come later on in the series where we're going to see Shampa and the female... Uh.